This is the first section in the chapter on elastic collisions in one dimension, chapter four, and this is about direct impact and Newton's law of restitution. So by direct impact, what we mean is two particles, things that models of particles um, directly impact each other like this. Um, so they move towards each other like this. They impact and then they move off in their their own direction. So they, it may be that they move in opposite directions after the impact. It may be that actually the way that they impact is that one of them is at rest. Um, and then after the impact, so this is at the top here, this is before the impact, this is what's going on after the impact down here and it may be that after the impact they both move in the same direction but the one uh, that wasn't moving this one here moves off at a faster speed than the one behind it so if this was u um, and here it's starting off u was zero for example and this is v1 and v2 um, v2 would be, have to be greater than, than v1 because it's moving off ahead of the one behind it yeah it can't be less than the one behind it otherwise they'd um, well it wouldn't work so we do have a coefficient linked to the um, the way or the speed at which these two objects collide and the, the speed at which they separate and it's called the coefficient of restitution coefficient of restitution restitution and the letter we use for it is letter e its value is between um, zero and one um, it tells us about the elasticity of the collision okay so elasticity of collision so how much do they sort of bounce after the collision well if the value of this coefficient of restitution e equals one it's what we call their perfectly elastic perfectly elastic in other words you know if they were um, go, you know going together at 10 meters per second then when they separate the speed of separation would be 10 meters per second we'll talk a bit more about the um, the speeds of approach and speed of separation in a minute if the value of e is zero then we have things which are inelastic or perfectly inelastic which basically means when they collide they stop moving completely so imagine plasticine where you've got two bits of plasticine thrown towards each other like this and then what happens is it bloop, they just become one like blob like this and they stop moving that would be an example where the coefficient of restitution is zero whereas things that are almost perfectly elastic might be things like uh, snooker balls or pool balls where you know that they got a great deal of, of bouncing power so how is this coefficient of restitution worked out? So E is this coefficient and it changes depending on the type of particles um, that are involved in the collision. But the way it's measured is it's the speed of separation, speed of separation divided by the speed of approach, speed of approach. So in other words, what's the speed that they're moving away from each other? So speed 
moving away from each other, from each other, after collision, or after the collision. Whereas the speed of approach is the speed moving toward each other, toward each other, before the collision before the collision and it all depends where whether the objects are moving in the same direction or opposite directions um i don't want to sort of talk about rules like you know if they're moving towards each other always do this or if they're moving away from each other always do this if they're moving in the same direction always do this rather than use rules let's use a bit of common sense let's look at the question and we can quite easily work out what the speed of separation is and what the speed of approach is, whether we need to add the velocities together or subtract them. It all depends on the question. OK, in each part of this question, two diagrams show the speed and directions of, of motion of the two particles A and B just before, that's here, and just after the impact. Uh, or collision. The particles move in a straight horizontal plane. Find the coefficient of restitution in each case. Right, so let's just remind ourselves of some things. Coefficient of restitution should always be between 0 and 1. Um, the way that we work it out is it's the speed of uh, separation. Speed of, I'll just put SEP for separation, divided by the speed of approach. Speed of approach. Now, although I don't like formulae, let's see if we can see some like general rules. So let's look at the separation. So we've got two particles. Now, if these two particles were moving away from each other at V1 and V2, the speed of separation would be V1 plus V2. Because you've got the combined effect of them moving in opposite directions if um, after the collision v1 and v2 they're moving in the same direction now in this case v2 would be greater than v1 for it to be moving away and the speed of separation would be v2 minus v1 yeah because if V2 was moving off at 10 and uh, V1 was moving towards it at 9, then actually um, the speed of separation would only be 1. So we subtract in that case. OK, um, so this is for separation. Right, let's look at approach. So I think when things approach each other, it could be that they're approaching each other and they're moving in the same direction. So we've got U1 and U2. Now for this to happen, U1 would have to be greater than U2, otherwise it would never catch up. U1 would be greater than U2. And a spread of approach would be um, U2 minus U1. Yes, yeah, so I have a think about that. The speed of approach would be u2 minus u1. We'll talk a bit more about it when we go through the examples. And if they were moving in opposite directions before the collision, then the speed of approach would be u1 plus u2. OK. So the reason I don't like rules for this is because uh, when they're approaching, you add when they go in the same direction. You add when again in the opposite direction when they um, when they're separating. When you approach, you do, um, and they're going in the same direction. You subtract. And I suppose when they go in um, separate, and again in the same direction, you also subtract. But it, it it's easier just to work it out. 
using a little bit of common sense rather than rules but that's just to give you an idea what's going on so a so at what speed does a separate well one's at rest uh, the other one is moving away at two so they separate at two meters per second and they approach at eight because the other one's at rest so that becomes a quarter that's our coefficient of restitution for a b okay right after the impact let's have a look well b is moving away um at five and a is behind it at four so actually it only looks like um b is moving away at one meter per second so the speed of separation would be one and i suppose if we look at the rules that we had down here then it's like v2 minus v1 that makes sense and then what's the speed of approach well um that's going to be three yeah a would be appearing to move towards a at three meters per second because b is already moving so the speed of um, approach is three so that's just a, a third there so again we could look at our speed of approach where we would do u2 minus u1 and for c again let's just use a bit of common sense to work this out speed of separation well if they're moving away we add them together so that's nine and before the impact they're moving towards each other so we add so that's going to be 18 which is a half okay two particles are traveling in the same direction on a smooth surface with speeds four and three respectively and let's start to do a diagram a b and we're told they're moving in the same directions like this and when it says respectively it means the same order so a is four b is three four and three they collide directly and immediately after collision continue to travel in the same directions okay so they continue going like this with speeds two and v respectively two and v respectively given that the coefficient of restitution between a and b is a third find v okay so e is the speed of separation over the speed of approach now that's e is a third now the speed of separation since they're moving in the same direction is going to be um v is going to be bigger than two by the way so it's v minus two and the speed of approach is going to be four minus three which is one right so this should be easy enough to solve a third equals v minus two over one we can cross multiply so we get one equals three v minus two so that means that one third equals v minus two which means that v equals a, th a third plus two so we could say two and a third meters per second and it has to be bigger than the two otherwise we know that we've done something wrong something's not quite worked out okay so we've got these two masses and we need to change the uh, masses into kilograms so we have a and b so a is going to be 0.2 kilograms and b is going to be 0.4 kg and we're told that they're traveling in opposite directions 
towards each other. So let's put these in here. And it says that their velocities are 5 and 4. So 5, 4. It says they collide. And after a collision, we're just told their velocity. So we don't know which direction. So I'm going to assume they actually change direction. If I am wrong, then when I work out my answer for V1 or V2, I will get a negative answer, which means it's actually going in the other direction. And I'm going to choose this direction as my positive direction. Yep, you could choose the other direction. You will still get the same answer. And we're also told that the coefficient of restitution is a half. Now, why have we been given the masses this time? Well, because we need a second equation, because we've got two unknowns. And that equation is going to be the conservation of linear momentum, which we've done already in chapter one, along with things like impulse. OK, so conservation of linear momentum, you're allowed just to write CLM. The examiner will know what that means. So before the collision, what's the total momentum? Well, that's going to be 0 0.2 times 5 plus 0 0.4 times by negative 4. Look at the direction of the 4. And then after the collision, it's going to be, I'm going to have to write it down here, because I'm running out of space, um, 0.2 V1. Now let's have a look. Ah, oh, my V1 is going against my opposite. So it's 0.2 times negative V1 plus 0.4 V2. Right, let's tidy this up. So 0 0.2 times 5 is 1. Um, 0 0.4 times by 4 is going to be 1.6. That's negative 1.6 equals. Then it's going to be negative 0 0.2 V1 plus 0.4 V2. Okay, so... I have negative 0 0.6 equals this. That side hasn't changed. I probably want to write this in a form that's going to uh, be a little bit nicer to use as an equation. So I'm going to times everything by negative 10. So that will give me 6 equals uh, 2v1 minus 4v2. I could divide that by 2. I'll leave it like that for the time being. That's fine. Now I'm going to want to get an equation from my um, coefficient of restitution. Now what's the speed of separation? Well, because of the directions I've chosen, it will be v1 plus v2 and before the collision they're moving towards each other that will be 5 plus 4 right that will give me 2 by cross multiplying 2 v1 plus v2 equals 9 so if I expand the brackets I will get 2v1 plus 2v2 equals 9. So here's my second equation here. So I want to solve simultaneously. Now, if I actually make 2v1 the subject here, I can nicely substitute that into the other equation. Yeah, so all I've done there is taken away 2v2 from both sides. I'm now going to substitute it into this. So that'll give me 6 equals. So where I've got 2v1, um, I'm going to put 9 minus 2v2 minus 4v2. 
So that give me uh, minus three if I take away nine from both sides. Minus six V2. All right, so what does that give me? V2 equals negative three divided by negative six, which is a half. So my direction is correct. Let me put this on the diagram. This is going to be a half and it's going to be moving in that direction. So next step is to work out a V1. So I can now substitute that half. Let me substitute that half into here. Yeah, back into that same equation again. So if I do that, I can substitute into the first one again. Doesn't matter too much which one. So I'm going to have 6 equals... 2v1 minus 4v2. Now v2 is a half. So 6 equals 2v1 minus 2. So let's add 2 to both sides. So 8 equals 2v1, which gives me v1 equals 8 over 2, which is 4. There we go. So that also means that I got the direction for V1 correct. So let's just make that really clear on this diagram here. Like this. So um, we said that V2 is a half. So this is a half here, meters per second. So that's the direction it's going in. And V is 4. So that's going in this direction. So my assumptions about the directions were correct. My first thing we need to do is to draw a diagram. So we've got these two balls, P and Q. So I will attempt to fit the diagram up here. So P, Q. And their masses are 3M and 4M. Whenever you get this thing respectively, written in a question it just means basically um, the direct the order of the things written is the same as the, the order of the first things that were given so uh, P goes with the 3M Q goes with the 4M uh, I'm going to put KG here so I don't I know that these are masses because there's other stuff as well I don't want to miss these out um, they're moving, it says they're moving towards each other, like this in a horizontal direction. And the speed of P is 3U. And the speed of Q is 2U. And in part A, I want to show what the speed is of Q after the collision. Now, that means that I need to make some assumptions about what V1 and V2 are. And I'm going to assume that after the collision, they actually both change directions. Okay, and I need to keep that in mind as I work through the question. And I also need to use, decide on a direction which is positive. And I'm going to choose this direction as positive. So part A, show that the speed of Q after the collision is U over 7. And uh, brackets 15e plus 1. So we basically want to show that this is what v2 equals. So we're going to need two equations. We'll have one equation for the coefficient of restitution e. We're told it's e. And that is the speed of separation. That's v1 plus v2 on my diagram because they're moving in the opposite direction. And the speed of approach which is 3u plus 2u because of my diagram. And as we're told in the question, they're moving towards each other. So that would be, um, so those two together make 5u. So that would be 5eu equals v1 plus v2. Okay, so equation number one, I'm going to keep that one to one side. And my other equation is going to be from the conservation of linear momentum. So I want the total momentum before multi uh, and it equals total momentum after. So before the collision, the momentum of P is 3M times by 3U. 
the momentum of Q is 4m times by 2u. Um, ah, now that's going to be negative 2u because of the direction. Just spotted that. So times by negative 2u. Almost missed that out. Then after the collision, uh, the momentum of P is going to be 3m times by negative v1 because again that's going against my opposite direction plus 4m times by v2 so this can all be tidied up to give me 9mu uh, minus 8mu equals negative 3m v1 plus 4m v2 now every term has got m in it so they can all cancel out so I'll cancel those out there and then I'll have 9u minus 8u which is just u so u equals negative 3v1 plus 4v2 right so here's my second equation now what do I need to do I need to put these two equations together simultaneously that is this equation and this one and since I need to get rid of um, v1 and I just want an equation for v2 I'm going to make v1 the subject and I'm going to make v1 the subject of this one because it's just a bit easier so if I do that v1 equals 5eu minus v2 and now what I'm going to do is substitute that equation into here and I'll write it down on the left hand side so once I do that I will have u equals uh, negative 3 times by v, v1 in other words negative 3 times by 5eu minus v2 plus 4v2 let's expand the brackets so I'll have u equals negative 15 eu uh, plus 3v2 plus 4v2 now remember i want to make v the subject so i can put 7v2 if i put those together equals um, u plus 15 eu right we're almost there now um, I can factorize so I've got 7v2 equals u and then in brackets 15e plus 1 and then the last step is v2 equals u over 7 15e plus 1 as required okay so now we can move on to part b let's just separate this out there's a lot of working here don't want to mix stuff up so part b uh, given that the direction of p is unchanged find the possible values of e now we need to look back at our question i assumed and my equations are based on v1 changing directions now if v1 uh, its direction is unchanged then my value of v1 will be negative it will be less than zero so you've got to watch out for that so i'll just write that down um, if the direction of p is unchanged okay then my value of v1 will be negative which means that it will be less than zero so in other words v1 is less than zero so what we're going to do is we're going to find out an equation for v1 uh, or an expression for v1 and make that less than zero and then follow through and then make e the subject right so can i work out v1 uh, yes i can i've got an expression for v2 which is here yeah and what i'm going to do i'm going to plug that value of v2 into now where did i have an expression for v1 here we go let's put it in here 
yeah, it saves me messing about. So that will be V1 equals 5EU minus V2. Now V2 is this. Let me just work that out. 15E plus 1. Now we've said, well, that needs to be less than 0. So 5, 5 not 15, 5EU. 5 eu minus u over 7 15 e plus 1 needs to be less than 0 that means that it's changed actually opposite to the direction i've got so what we're basically saying is that it's going this way yeah um, so let's tidy this up which means expanding the brackets then refactorizing it to get the e out so if I expand the brackets, I have 5 EU minus 15 over 7 EU minus um, U over 7 is less than 0. Right, um, now the 5 EU minus the 15 over 7 so 5 minus 15 over 7 is 20 over 7. So basically what I've got is 20 over 7 EU. And then I'm going to move the U over 7 across. So I end up with less than U over 7. Next step. Um, I'm going to divide both sides by U. Actually, let's do that here. So I've got U on both sides, um, which I can divide by, so that's gone. So what I basically have now is 20 over 7 E is less than 1 over 7. So now E is less than, so if I divide uh, 1 over 7 and divide that by 20 over 7, I get 1 over 20. So that would be my range of values that the coefficient of friction needs to be, sorry, not the coefficient of friction, the coefficient of restitution needs to be less than 1 over 20 for that to take place. Okay, part C. Part C. So in part C, it says, given that the magnitude of the impulse of P on Q is 80 mu over 9. Let's get rid of this so we can see 80 mu over 9. Find the value of E. Right, in part C, we're given the magnitude of the impulse of P on Q, which is 80 mu over 9. Find the value of E. Now, the magnitude of the impulse um on uh, of p on q um or q on p it doesn't matter which one we choose if i draw what those impulses look like one here and one here it doesn't actually matter which one we use to work out the um, value of e i'm going to use q simply because um, I, I know it's initial velocity to you and the final velocity of uh, V2 was given in the question. The, if I use P, particle P or ball P to work out uh, in, or to, in my formula, the issue is if V1 is wrong, then um, that actually means that the rest of my working is going to be wrong. So I'm going to say here, consider Q. So I'm going to draw a little diagram for Q, like this. And I'm going to put on its velocity before, which is 2 you going that way. Its velocity after. Now I worked that out, didn't I? V2. And it was given in the question, U over 7. 15e plus 
and the impulse is going to look like this. That's the actual impulse of P on Q. Or I could work out the impulse of Q on P, get the same thing. And that's given as um, 80 MU over 9. So I now use my uh, impulse equal to change in momentum to work this out. So impulse is change in momentum. So all I do is substitute that now in. The impulse is 80 mu over 9. So let's write that down. 80 mu over 9. That equals the mass of Q. I suppose I should have written that down. That was 4m, wasn't it? It's mass 4m. So 4m times by V. So V is going to be um, U over 7 times by 15E plus 1. Okay, now I'm taking um, this direction as positive here, the same direction as the impulse. And then I subtract the momentum before. So that's going to be 4M times by, now it's going to be negative to you because of the direction it's going, the 2u is going against my positive direction, so times by uh, negative 2u, times negative 2u, okay, so the rest of this is just algebraic, it's just actually um, making e the subject, working out what e is now, um, Let's tidy this up. So I've got 80 mu over 9 equals. So I'm going to expand the brackets here. So I'm going to get 4 times 15, which is 60 over 7. So I'll have 60 over 7 uh, mu e mu. And then I will have plus, then it's going to be 4 over 7 mu. Okay, that's expanding fully the first brackets. Then the second bracket is going to be plus 8 mu. So the first thing I notice is that every term has got mu in it. So let's get rid of those. Like that. I'm going to continue my working over here due to lack of space. I'll just about hopefully squeeze it in here. Right, so let's write down what we have now, now that we've crossed all those MUs out. So 80 over 9 equals um, 60 over 7E plus. 4 over 7 plus 8. Okay, right, I can put everything all on one side. So I'll have 60 over 7e. Okay, that's going to be equal to 80 over 9 minus 8 minus 4 over 7. So let's work that out. So that's going to be um, 80 over 9 minus 4 over 7. Minus 8. Okay, that gives me 20 over 63. So I should be able easily to work out E. E is going to be equal to 20 over 63. 20 over 63 divided by 60 over 7. And that leaves me with E equal to 1 over 27. So that's the value of E there. So there's our final answer. And it it, it fits with what we, we did before because we said that E needs to be less than 1 over 20, and it is. If I've got an answer of E greater than 1 over 20, 20 it's probably telling me I've, I've not done something quite right. Right, you should now be able to do exercise 4A on pages 73 to 76 of the textbook and I suppose the important thing here is that E equals the speed of separation 
over speed of approach. And I suppose what we could say is that if we have two particles that are separating like this, okay, we got V1, V2. So in this case, um, V2 would be greater than V1. Then to work out the speed of separation, we do V2 minus V1. If our two particles were separating like this, going in opposite directions, then the speed of separation would be V1 plus V2, like this. And if we now look at our speed of approach, if two things are approaching um, like this, one of them could be at rest, by the way. Okay, and we've got V1 and V2. In this case, V1 would have to be greater than V2 to get closer to it. Then the speed of approach is going to be uh, V1 minus V2. And if two things are approaching, and they are approaching going in opposite directions like this, then the speed of approach is going to be V1 plus V2.